A hundred years ago last month in the Grand Café in Paris, the Lumiere brothers showed moving pictures to the public. That was December the 28th, 1895. Just 10 months later, October 13th, 1896, New Zealand has got a look at this new wonder. A century on and there are multiplex cinemas springing up all over the country. Per head of population we have the third highest number of cinema screens in the world and we're the fourth top movie going country. Over 14 million attendances last year. We look back at some of the people who started the pictures in New Zealand and the changes in the century of cinema. The first screening in, in New Zealand of motion pictures was in 1896 at the Opera House in Auckland and, and put on by professors Houseman and Gow. It was staged as part of the vaudeville show, Godfrey something was, uh, part of a vaudeville slot, put on as a novelty. In 1890, Henry Hayward established a company called the Bresciens. They were all instrumentalists and all good singers. Henry Hayward came across T.J. West, a showman who had an Edison kinematograph, uh, showing pictures as a novelty only. They travelled through New Zealand, landing up in Auckland. They then went to Australia and played in the principal towns over there. Made good money over there, and the total was about £35,000. At least three of them bought houses with them for money. Fullers uh, were based in Australia and they uh, ran vaudeville shows mostly. After some years in opposition, my grandfather got to, with the Fullers got together and formed Fuller Hayward. Phil Hayward, who was uh, Henry's son, and Henry decided that they would buy a Queen Street property and build a real picture palace. It was the biggest theatre in New Zealand at that time, it held about 2,000 people and had big armchairs, that was one of the features of it. Restaurant downstairs. We had a magnificent orchestra, a 22-piece orchestra in the majestic best in New Zealand. This is 1929, and Henry Hayward had over 70 theatres under his control at the stage. A uh, quarter of a million patrons a week he had in his circuit alone. I went down and played the piano at a Waihi. And when the villain came on, they would throw things at the screen. Tomatoes, fish and chips, anything. <laughs> well, uh, I was sitting there playing the piano. This is terrifying, you know. And at the close of the performance, the whole staff of the theatre had to get to work and, and, and paint the screen again and clean it up for the night session starting at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Warner Brothers Vitaphone. Now, this type of uh, talkies used records. The greatest problem with the introduction of sound was the big discs they sent with the films. And these had to be absolutely perfect in synchronization. The pickup was placed right on the arrow. It was terribly expensive for those days. And of course, once it's got into this, if there's just nobody wants to go to, to silent films anymore. Later on, Fox, Petra Goldwyn Mayer used sound on film, where the sound was actually photographed onto the film. There was a lot of my itinerant operators in small areas. They used to have the projector in the back of a truck. They used to go either back this truck into a hall or somewhere like that. They'd have it open and um, show the film. There's another chain, and that's the Malcolmated Theatres, which grew up at quite a, quite a powerful chain of Joe Moodaby and Mike Moodaby. They were, were coming from very humble beginnings, my father and, and my uncle. Uh, their mother had brought the two boys up as a solo parent, her husband having died here. She brought them up on social welfare. She ran a grocery shop and uh, was never able to read or write English. They started in the 1920s. Dad started as a cleaner in a Queen Street cinema, the King George, and that was owned by a Canadian dentist, Dr. Rayner, who then asked him if he'd like to be a partner in that theatre. They thought it was a good idea to be into the movie business and uh, bought a partnership 
of Hippodrome Pictures. They never actually bought theatres. What they did was uh, take over leases. One time when uh, he'd taken over a few leases and he was strapped for um, money and a local businessman came in and uh, said to him, uh, Michael, I hear you have financial problems uh, and threw a wad of notes on the desk. This gentleman was pre prepared to help back him with absolutely no collateral and said, just said, look, pay it back when you can. Kerridge had a circus on the east coast up around Gisborne and we knew that he was doing extremely well and he was anxious to get into our business too. Kerridge bought into the uh, old Fuller Hayward chain. Her Majesty is greeted by Mr. R.J. Kerridge. Took that over and in no time flat, he was controlling the whole of the old Fuller Hayward empire. He took over J.C. Williamson Picture Corporation. Our carriage Odeon chain went from Kai to Invercargo. Right. We are the girls and we are They'd have a local personality as an uncle so-and-so and have the kids in and they show cartoons and give them lollies. It, it was very, very successful. In fact, we had one in Invercargo called the Bertie Budgie Club, which went for quite some time after that. We always played the national anthem at the beginning of the show, and everybody stood automatically. People used to dress up in, in uh, tuxedos, and, and the ladies would be in their finery. It was like going to a stage play. There were people who had the same seats booked every Saturday night to make sure that they, they had their seats. Most people have been moved out of the cities and uh, they live in the suburbs and that's where the theatres are now going. To maximise the revenue from a release which has a, a big TV campaign, the distributor needs to have his title in as many screens as possible throughout the country all at the same time. The old picture palace can only give you the one choice. With a multiplex in a day, we could be screening 11, 12, 14 different movies. If we get a film where we, we know the demand is going to be greater than the uh, normal one screen situation, then we loop the film. We go from one projector to another with the same print, and in this particular one, we can loop all eight cinemas. We've now gone to this latest format, which is, this is one of the, the formats, and it's a CD-ROM disc, which all we do is we slip it in a player, and it will synchronise with the film. You've got six tracks of sound coming at you off the desk. We've basically gone right back in history and repeated ourselves. Hmm. And thanks to the members of the Film Buffs Association for their assistance with that item, which was created by editor Warren Smythe. Well...